Hey guys, it's Derica with Derica's Designs and today we're making this big scarecrow attachment. Now this can be sewn or no sew. So just get out your sewing machines and your glue guns and let's get started. Back. And this is the um, prototype scarecrow that I did and he's a mess, but um, we're going to change him up a little bit, do little things. Um, now he is part sew and then what we'll do is we'll sew all the pieces we need to and then we'll have to cut so that I can move stuff off the table and, you know, make room <laughs> because he's so big. I'm not going to be able to make him on this little area right here. So, all right. So the pieces we have, well, I have some of this um, in my Halloween supplies decorations. I had one of those door netting things um, that you can put, you know, or I don't know what you call it, actually. It's just netting. Um I like to use that. Um, we have some felt for the hat, black felt. Now you can use black felt on the body as well. Um, it's really your choice. I don't think it, I didn't, I didn't, this didn't show up in front of the black as well. So I used the gray colored one, but really depending on what you're going to put, if you're going to do shredded cotton pieces or something like that, then you can probably just use the black felt for the body. Um, because the reason I like to use cotton for the body is because I want to be able to shred it. Um, and you really can't shred felt. It, like I tried to with this hat and you can see I just put in little nicks and little um, things. It's just, it's, but it's not, as, it's not as fun as shredding it. You know, like you cut it and you pull it so it makes um, shred marks. So this is the body piece. Now I had two choices for the head piece. I had this um, Copper Canyon felt. Again, can't shred this, but it would make a really good rich colored pumpkin head because he is a pumpkin. So um, then I found this orange in my stash upstairs. It is the exact same pattern as this gray. Um, it's uh, These are both found on the wall at Hobby Lobby, of the wall of cotton fabrics. Every color has one of these and they're just cloudy looking. They just have a, they're not bright colors. So I think I'm going to use this one instead of this one because I can pull these and shred these and make it look, um, I don't know, just kind of beat up. <laughs> so, and that's what we're going for. You don't want your pumpkin or your, excuse me, your scarecrow to be perfect. And then I just cut out very basic face pieces, the same pieces that are on your pattern, but you guys, you know, Go to clip art on Google, look up scarecrow face, promise you, you will find something you really like. Okay, so this whole pattern, everything we are about to sew right now can be hot glued. Because we are going to cover everything, we're going to cover this whole shirt with, um, you know, either this netting or strips of cotton that is just tattered and frayed, you can glue these edges. They, um... It will just take you some time, but you will just put hot glue. Don't put it in the end, of course, but put hot glue all the way around. Leave yourself a little hole in the top for the stick to go through, but just hot glue the shoulder, the underarm and down the sides and um, maybe put it under something big and flat, you know, a big, a big book or something that can hold it. Or actually, I usually, I'll put it under my um, cutting mat if it's clean, you know, I'll just put it under there and then just let that hold it down for you because it's such a big piece. Same thing with the head. We're going to put a hat on it and we're going to put raffia hair looking kind of stuff. So if you wanted to glue this whole thing, leave the bottom open, of course, um, glue the whole thing, we're going to cover it all. So nobody will see those seams if the glue, you know, gets messy or pops open or something like that. So, um, the only part that I would have a hard time making is this, but you can do it. So if this is the brim and it's very flat, I wanted it very floppy and flimsy. Um, I didn't want to make a really big top hat or witch hat, sorry, because he's a scarecrow. So I wanted it to be floppy. Um, you could glue, you could glue this right here and then, you know, just kind of open it up and get it on here how you want it and then glue it to this. Now, that, that's not going to be easy, though, guys. It's not. And you're going to have to take a lot of time doing that. 
I'm not going to show you that right now because literally we're going to sew because sewing is so much easier for me. But, um, you know, you glue this, clamp it down, let it stay. Don't flip it around because then you'll pull all the glue right off of it. And then somehow get it on here and you can glue it, you know, over the hole down there. That's on you guys if you, if you absolutely do not sew whatsoever. So, but we, I'm just going to do all the quick sewing pieces and we're going to talk about them and, um, I don't know. And then we'll, like I said, then we'll have to break so I can move all of this out of the way and we can, um, go forward with the non-sewing part. Okay. Let me grab my sewing foot. Got moved. All right. So basically on the hat, we're just going to sew directly down the seam. Let me turn the machine on. There we go. Now we are, um, oops, I can't, he is so big. I have a hard time even, <laughs> I can't get him. We're going to cut the end off of this and throw some raffia out of the top. And somehow I didn't stuff the hat because I wanted it to be, again, floppy. And so somehow I'm going to make it, um, you know, stay where it's not shooting straight up in the air. But we'll figure that out when we get to it. So I sewed it along that. and I'm going to flip it around. I'm not going to cut the end off it until I'm ready to put the raffia in there because once we cut this seam, this is this, the um, threads are going to come loose and you don't want that. So we don't want to cut this until we're ready to hot glue that seam to keep it in place. Okay. So now we take this turned right side out. There's our seam. The seam would be in the back or for me, I like to have it in the back. We take our circle, the brim, and we just put it over it. See how I just put it right inside of it, just like that. Gosh darn, it's not gonna agree with me today. There we go, like that. Um, and then I always start in the back. There's the back right. It's not gonna agree with me. So I just choose this, if this is my back, that I have my seam right there, then I just find this, I'm gonna flip it around. This is gonna be my back. And of course, <laughs> it's not gonna be easy. I'm going to put it right to that on the outside though. Like it's going to be difficult. <laughs> I love felt, but sometimes you have to fight with it. Okay. So that's my back of the brim and my back of the hat and they are together right on that seam. So I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to pin those together. Then I'm going to just slowly start moving around. Remember the brim is on the outside of your triangle piece. And you just keep moving around. I thought this would be easiest to see on this above this white area here because when you're working with black, but I just kind of keep moving it around. Don't want to pull on either one. Um, if you get done and it's too far, there's too much of a gap or you didn't have enough, you just have, then you can unpin it and just kind of start over. All right, but we won't know that until we get there. Sometimes there's a big, uh, well, there's a lot of extra fabric and, that, and then you just have to go back and tighten it up a little, but this is going to be perfect. See how it's ending right, basically right here. There's no big gap. It's not too tight. So there, so we have this. Now I have my pins on the outside just cause I like to keep them out of the way. You can have them facing on the inside, but when you're sewing, um, I've always just had them on the outside like that. It just helps hold everything down, but see how it, if there's no gaps or anything, it just fit just perfectly. Okay. So now we're going to place this inside with the, with the hole of the head open still, and we're just going to sew it. You got your pin. I'm going, I'm starting right on that seam, which was my back side. And as we go, we're going to spin this around towards, towards us. Um, just go a little bit at a time, go from pin to pin to pin and take out your pin and go to the next pin and then take out that pin. And all the while I'm kind of twisting it around. So I'm getting the inside of this hat. Just 
pin to pin. And then I'm back at the start. So now I'm all sewn just like that. But when you look at this side, oh, I have a I have a hole here. Now, if you've ever done it, look at that. That's a big hole. I did not line these up well enough. So I'm going to go ahead and just sew over those really quick. Make sure you get the brim out of the way. That's better. I don't see any holes. But see, so that your, your, your seam is on the inside here. But when you open it to the outside, it's just clean like that. So that's why I sew it on the inside. I just like it to look like that. And then you have this cute little basic witch hat you can use for anything, guys. This, this pattern doesn't just have to be for the scarecrow. If you just need a quick, easy, little, you know, a smaller witch hat, this is a great one. Very simple, very basic. You can double up the bottom if you need it to be thicker. Um, you can use any kind of fabrics you want. So the little hat is super easy to use, to make. All right, so now we're gonna sew our face piece, our head. And basically, I'm just gonna go all the way around. Oops, I guess I should. This I should do it right sides together, of course, because we wanna flip it around. Now, if you're hot gluing this, you don't need to Flip anything around, just leave it as is. My foot pedal is squirrely down there. Okay, so then I just turn it right side out. And I always get asked, you know, how big are my seam allowances? Guys, just whatever. Quarter inch, half inch. I don't, it, it, this, you're not, nobody's wearing this. <laughs> you don't have to be precise down to the eighth of an inch on seams and, and where things line up. And I mean, we just basically made a little sack. It's super easy. I know a lot of you were, you know, trained to sew and you have so much more sewing knowledge than I have. And you know, that's fine. If you, uh, if you are a numbers person and you absolutely want to know exactly what the seam allowance is, just say a quarter of an inch. That's like standard. But if you don't, if it's not a quarter of an inch, it's okay too. So I just cut a bunch of slits at the bottom. Now I'm going to tear these up. I don't know, a couple of inches. I'm just going to tear them. I want them all frayed. I want them to look, oh, I left my, I have a slicker brush. You know, the dog slicker brush. Um, that has the little metal tying things on it. I love using that to fray things because those little metal um, things, they, they grab everything. And uh, I don't know, I forgot to bring it in here. It's in the other room. But th that is what I would use. I would pull all of these and I would take that slicker brush. And what it's going to do, it's going to catch any of these little threads that are um, sticking out and it's just gonna make it look even more tattered and worn. So if you have a I have a specific slicker brush, not for the dogs. Of course, I wouldn't really use those on dogs anyway, but my dogs are way too spoiled for that. But, uh, so like that. So he kind of looks like the little monster on Pac-Man at the moment, <laughs> kind of. But we're gonna gather this up right here when we put it on the pole. So then we can really, um, I'm even going to do this just a little here and there, you know, Oops. I just, I don't want them to be all the exactly the same. I want it to look just, uh, I mean, essentially, if you wanted to use burlap and y'all know, I have a true love for burlap. I, I used it for years before I even knew how dangerous it could be in large quantities. But now to do a simple little thing like this with burlap, I mean, you're not looking at, you know, and you just be careful with it. You know, make sure you vacuum up all the fibers after you've used it. Make sure you clean up your workspace after you've cut the, um, you can still use burlap. Um, just, you know, 
in small quantities and make sure when you're done with that burlap, you are vacuuming up all of those little, those little bitty fibers. So those are what can get into your lungs. You can breathe them and they can cause lung issues down the line. Um, there are women who, you know, cut and use burlap for, you know, 50 years and they do end up with some kind of lung issues from it. So just want to be careful. That's all. But we are not using burlap. We're going to use this uh, a murky orange color. <laughs> so, all right. So now we're going to sew the body and same thing. Right sides together and oops, don't have much space here. I'm just going to sew the top. I'm going to kind of guesstimate where my center is. Let's see if I have a pin here. My center is about right there. I'm going to leave like a one inch hole right there because I need my, I need my dowel to be able to go from down here all the way up through, through this into the head. It, that's the only way to keep everything straight. Otherwise the head just flops around. You've got to, you've got to put the dowel up into the head. That's why I recommend when you get these dowels, I just got these from Walmart. This one is a quarter inch by 36 inches. I didn't remember how long they were, but they're a full yard. You're going to leave it until you get everything put on there. You're going to leave that length and you're not going to cut that off until you're done. So um, I can't really give you a length of the dowel yet. You want to leave all of it. And when you're done and everything's tied on and everything's hot glued in place, then you will snip off um, these. And I, I recommend a quarter inch dowel because if you have a pair of just wire cutters, you can cut it with this. Um, it takes a little pressure or you can use your stem cutter. If you have one of the big stem cutters, you can use that to cut a quarter inch dowel. Any thicker, it gets a little bit harder. Okay. But we'll put that back. That's for later. But basically I'm going to sew all the way, leave, obviously leave the arms open. sew across the top, leaving a one inch hole right here. And then I'm going to fray this bottom the same way we did this head over here and the arms. We'll fray all, we're going to fray everything. This is going to be covered by this, so it does not need to be perfect, all right? I didn't even sew all the way to the end on these because I'm going to fray it up. So really didn't even need to. Just make it like a big t-shirt. Okay. Before we flip it around, I'm just going to throw some of these on there. I'm just snipping them so that I can pull them. And you want to, you want to really tug on them and make all the strings come out and look really messy. So just, uh, don't worry about being careful with it. And if you get some that are too long, that's okay too, because we're going to bunch it up. It's okay. Nobody will even notice. It will all fit in there. It's one of those fun projects. And again, I would go over this with a slicker brush just to make it look even more tattered. Maybe you don't have to cut off the edges. I just, when you gather this up, um, you just don't want them all to look like a, you know, they're all cut straight. So, you know, have some fun with them. Keep doing the same over here. If you've ever made rag bows, you know how satisfying it is to just tear up a bunch of cotton fabric. <gasps> okay, that looks pretty good. And I'm not really measuring, guys. I'm just tearing it a few inches. I just wear it, you know, um, Think about a scarecrow out in the field. They're not, they, they use old 
worn out work clothes, you know, farmers old clothes. So they probably have holes and don't, don't worry about it. Oh, jeez. Well, this one doesn't want to pull. Holy moly. Okay. Try the next one. Goodness gracious. All right. We're going to get these eventually. All right. There we go. The messier, the better. So now I'm going to flip it around. I could have flipped it around first. It really doesn't matter. And basically this, this bottom, um, this shirt piece, I only used it because I wanted to have something to put a little polyfill in to, to fill him out. So he's not just flat and floppy. You know, those scarecrows you can get like from Walmart, the ones that they sell every year with the fall things that you put with your hay, bales of hay. They're just flat and floppy. And I, I don't know. I just, I wanted to put some polyfill in this guy just so his body has some kind of shape to it. Now it's just the upper part of his body. Of course, we're not doing legs, but, um, I wanted it to be stuffed. Okay. So the only other thing I had, and I may not use it was this little like bandana piece of fabric. Now this is a woven fabric, meaning for me, I can pull these strings out of it and make it look, um, you know, fringy and worn. Um, let's see, let's use him. We can bring him back over here really quick. If you wanted to do like a bandana type thing around his neck, over above the fringes and the, the um, raffia, it, it looks really cute when you get it in there just right, just like that. Um, you know, he's got that, it, it kind of gives him that, well, that's probably too big, but a little bit of the, you know, cowboy kind of look. I don't know. I hadn't really played with that much. It was just an idea I had at the last minute. I don't know if we'll use it today, but I have it if we want to. Um, and then this stuff, I have a hunk of it. I don't even know. It's what, maybe two feet by two feet. I don't know how big it is, but we will drape this over the arms once we have the poles in, and then we'll start shredding it up so that that looks good. So I'm going to take a break really quick and um, get the sewing machine out of the way and get all the hot glue over here and um, I'll be right back. Okay, we are back. I've got the sewing machine moved off to the side and these are the pieces that we just sewed or hot glue depending on what you wanted to do with them in the little witch hat. Um, I will um, tatter this up and try to put some cuts in it. Maybe even put a patch. Maybe that's what we can use this for Oops. is to put patches on this to make it look, um, or it actually might be cute just putting this as a band around the hat. I don't know. It makes a witch hat kind of look like a cowboy hat. So I don't know. That's just, those are all things we can, we can try. I do have some black jute rope. It doesn't matter if you have black or brown. It really won't make a difference at all. No one's really going to see it. Okay. Move my hot gun. Now these dowels are big, so um, let's see. I said not to cut them, but just for I, I don't know if I can get my do anything with my workspace here with them this big. So this is how I judge it. I'm going to leave maybe was that four inches on each side of the arms. I know I don't need it any longer than this. I probably want it a little bit shorter, but we can always trim it down again. Um, I just, for workspace reasons, I don't have that much, that much room. So I'm actually going to use this kind guys, just wire cutters, super easy. Um, you just kind of, the, the, it's bamboo or pine. I guess actually probably pine. It's really soft. So you can see just by squeezing it once, I got that huge dent in it. So I just turn it, oops, squeeze it the other way, and then it just, just twist it and it breaks right off. So I know for this, for the arms, that's the length I need. So now, gosh, stuff everywhere. We're going to do the head. And again, look at this. I, I, there's no way I can work with this thing being 36 inches tall. So we have our arm piece. We know the head is probably going to go up to approximately here. And then I know I want the bottom to stick out. So let's say six inch, six to eight inches up, six to eight inches down. You can always trim it again. So, you know, go, 
go a little bit longer. Well, there it goes. <laughs> go a little bit longer. We'll just grab another one instead of having to stop and go grab that thing. We'll do this all over again. So six to eight inches up, six to eight inches down. I'm gonna turn it around so I'm holding the piece that I need. See, I, I just basically hold it and turn it, twist it, and it comes right off. It's so easy. All right, so now we have our pieces here. So I'm better at this because I'm right-handed. I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna take the black jute and we're going to just start lashing it. I mean, just start putting it together. These, the sticks will still slide in and out. So um, you can still move them around, but for now you just wanna get a bunch of strings around it. We will hot glue this into place once it's in the shirt, but for right now, we just <laughs> we just want to get it uh, all held together with this, and we're going to tie knots in it. So just go in and out around um, the cross up here a few times. I feel like that is good, and then just tug on it. We're going to tie a regular double knot, just so it doesn't come undone, like that. And this is going to be in the shirt, so no one's going to see it. So there. So now you have it like that. And clearly it's not centered, but you can slide it around, get it where you want it, like that. Okay? So the reason we're not going to glue it yet is because in order to get it into the shirt, we have to do this. We have to kind of squeeze it, not so much to break it, but in order to get it to go in the arms, yesterday, this is what I had to do. You go up in the body, you put this arm in that side, and you keep working this up. You put the top, the head part through the hole that you left in the very top. You just kind of have to wiggle them on. It's like trying to dress a doll. Okay, so you have, you have one arm through, and the head through. So then what you do is you wiggle the stick, not all the way through your knot, not through your, um, but then you just get it to where you can get your other arm through like that. So now the shirt is on there and um, all your poles are in the right spot. And this is where if you want to, you can reach in here and I just, right up here at the top by the neck, I'm just gonna put in a little bit of hot glue. And that is just so that things don't slide around the whole time that I'm trying to build this guy. Just a little bit, you don't have to put a lot. Um, you could probably go in up from under the shirt and do it a little bit as well. But for right now, I wanna get the glue in there because when we add some polyfill, I want it to be closed at the top up here. Just. There we go. So there. So that is the basic. Now, obviously, you do not have to add polyfill whatsoever. He's he's actually kind of fun, just like I'm, I'm not even hardly on the camera right now. He's actually kind of fun, um, just like this, you know, put the head on there and like this. But you know me, I'm going to do extra things just because I want to. So now we'll do the polyfill. Now I'm not going to like overstuff him. And of course, in the arms, you're not going to go all the way to the end because um, you want to put that raffia in there. And I'm not putting polyfill on the front and the back. Like I have it laying down. I'm just putting the polyfill on top of this stick, on top of the dowel. Excuse me. It doesn't need to be like a stuffed animal, okay? I, like I said, I, I just like the polyfill to fill him out a little bit. So he doesn't look like one of those flat Walmart pumpkins or scarecrows, excuse me. Just like that, just to give him so that it looks, you know, when they put scarecrows out um, in the fields, they do stuff them usually with hay or raffia or, or, you know, the equivalent of that is to make them look like a person. So I thought we'll just make him have a look, just like that. So see, he's not totally stuffed. In fact, the arms are hardly stuffed at all, but I'm gonna fill it with raffia and then we're gonna tie ties around it. And the same thing here, we're going to tie a tie around it down here. Okay. 
Oh, my raffia is in the table. I will have to go grab the raffia. I very much dislike working with raffia, but you know, I love the look of it. <laughs> it's just, I just grab a handful and then just start twisting it around about the length that you want it. So this is what, about probably six inches or so, like that. Um, and then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut a piece off of it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie, um, the top end. Here. I'm just going to tie this at one at the very top end up here. Just so it makes a nice little bundle and it's easier to handle. Oops, I missed, I missed about half of that bundle. Hold on. I didn't realize some of it was so short. Okay, let's start over again. When you, when you tie it off, it's just instead of trying to glue all this messy raffia just tie it and that way you're working with one big piece rather than 300 little annoying pieces so like that okay and then what i do you don't want any of these to be rounded you want them all to be straight um, no no curves so i just kind of go through it run my run my scissors through it and anywhere it sticks I just cut so you know you want it to look like just a bunch of straw which is exactly what it does look like and it makes a complete mess so we're going to trim off these extra super long ones all right so we have that I cannot, cannot work with all this It'll drive me crazy. There we go. I'll put it in the trash can. Okay, so now we want to grab a piece of jute again. And we're going to make a knot with this, so it doesn't need to be super long. But what we're going to do, we're going to, oops, we're going to have, keep losing it. We're going to have our jute under there. And then I'm going to go through and pull out all the little um phrase that we made just to make sure none of them get caught up inside make sure they're all good we can still pull them out afterwards but i just make sure they're good like that and i have my my jute is kind of right behind it there i'm going to take this i'm going to put it and i'm going to actually hot glue this just the back side just put you don't need a ton of hot glue just like that and i'm going to glue it directly to the dowel I just want it to be, if somebody tugged on it, it wouldn't just like all come out. Like I don't want um, all the pieces. And basically I take my, where my wrap, raveled edge is right here and I go down and that's where I'm, that's basically where I'm gluing the little knot that we put on that. So when that raffia is glued to that dowel, Kind of move the polyfill out of the way. You don't want the polyfill in the way. Um, so it kind of looks like this. If you can see, polyfill is to about right there. Um, glued on raffia right there. And then all the rest just coming out. Again, take all your little frayed pieces like this. Take your knot or your jute. And we're just gonna we're just going to tie a knot in this. Basically right at that gather, right at the top of where all of your um, frays are. If, if you did in like two to three, and I really going to tug this. I'm just going to make a regular old knot again. Nope. Like that. So the back isn't really pretty, right? The back is not so great. But the front now has all this raffia coming out of it and all these cute little frayed, fringy things and a couple pieces of jute rope and all kinds of stuff. Um, I know it's easier to, it's fun, more cute to see when it's standing up, but you kind of see how that looks. You have all your frays. And if you notice any of that are tucked up under, just grab them, pull them out. There's one right there. Grab them, pull them out. 
Um, and that's what that's basically what the bottom is going to look like. So you can leave this length of pole or um, dowel on here, or you can trim it down. I'm just going to trim it to right, right below where the raffia is, because when you're putting it in a wreath or something, you don't want that, that dowel to really stick out um, and maybe scratch somebody if they walk by or, you know, I really want it tucked up in there. I want to make sure the dowel is within the confines of the wreath. Um, so just like that. See? So we're going to do the exact same thing with the arms, but we're going to use smaller bunches of raffia or shorter bunches. I should say not necessarily smaller, just they're not going to be, that, that was about, I would guess that was probably six, seven inches. So these ones are probably more like four to five inches. Okay. So basically I'm just kind of putting the width of my hand like that. And I think that, and once we tie this end, that coming out will be the perfect um, length for it. So we're going to grab a random piece of raffia and then just tie it. Um, if you use the thicker pieces of raffia, they, they won't go anywhere. They're, they're pretty easy to tie. Okay, like that. And get all this out of the way. All right. And again, just go through and make sure there aren't any loops. Um, some of these are extremely longer than the others, so I'm just going to do a little trim. You want it messy looking, but it doesn't have to be like completely insane. So you still want it to basically look like this. So that's one. So let's make another one real quick. And guys, it does not matter how much raffia you put in this, just whatever you think looks good. I mean, I'm, I'm just grabbing handfuls. This one is much thicker than the one that I just did. You can kind of see, well, maybe it won't be. It just seems much thicker. Not that I think it'll matter. I'm just going to pull out this big one. There's one in here that's super, super big. That might be what's making it look. I mean, nobody's going to compare your arms and show you one's longer than the other, but if you are OCD like me, just go ahead and do it. <laughs> Can't help it. Tie this top right here. If I can get my fingers to work. There we go. So, and basically throughout all this project, this, you're going to make these little bundles because it's so much easier than trying to just throw in a whole bunch of random open loose. When we do the hair, we're going to do two bundles just like this. And when we do it around the neck, we're going to do another bundle just like this. So, um, you know, make, you, if you want, you can make um, five, wait, one, two, three, four, six bundles to start with and just have them ready. Um, make, make them all approximately the same size. The only ones that are, now this one, the neck and the hair are probably all about the same size. The only ones I went a little smaller on were the arms. And I didn't go that much smaller, just, you know, an inch or so. Okay, so we have our two little raffia bundles for the arms, just like that. And I didn't bring enough jute with me. Maybe I have some brown jute. We can mix and match brown. So I have two pieces that we're going to use on the arms. Now this arm, I don't know what happened, but I feel like I didn't get the polyfill. It's basically just to the shoulder. So I'm just going to put just a little bit in there just to make the arm. Um, you just want a little, a little bit in there, not to the end. Cause so you can see now if I pull back my fringy pieces, the polyfill is right there. And that's where I'm going to take my, um, raffia and glue it right there. So I just put it right up against that polyfill and then I pull it all over. And I'm going to put my little piece of jute under there, have it ready. And soon. All right, so grab both sides. Just 
gather it up and I'm basically where where I just um, where I glued the raffia on where that I where the tie is that's pretty much where I'm putting this knot now you can see on this one the raffia goes right to the end of the dowel and that's I like that I'm gonna leave it like that if you want if you want it further um, you can either push the dowel through a little bit we did hot glue it so I don't I really don't want to mess with it too much or you can just cut these shorter like if you want the dowel to actually show more like maybe an inch sticking up just trim up these it's easier than trying to move it all especially since we hot glued it you don't want to um, undo that hot glue okay do the other side again I'm just gonna stick my finger in there because the polyfill looks a little little pitiful right there I might even put in just a another little cotton ball size right here there we go because the shoulder wasn't wasn't quite where I wanted it now this side looks like the stick sticks out further but we'll wait and see before we do anything with that we're gonna put our raffia in first and then we'll decide if the stick needs to be trimmed or if we just need to trim some of the, the raffia there okay I'm putting it on there and oh here it is another little piece of jute black or brown whatever you have and I'm just going right basically right where the fringes start and I'm just making a knot and squeezing the devil out of it because you want it to look uh, you want these little fringes to like really poke out and have be very noticeable and I'm going to go back and probably um, use a slicker on these just to make them look a little more fringy this one down here I thought looked really good and fringy but this one up here looks very professional <laughs> it's like it was you know it's very cut and clean I don't like that I don't want that look but there we go so you can see that is the body um super cute super easy all right now you have two options um that I know of. you could obviously do you can leave him just like this if you want to but I mean let's have some fun with him you can take this piece of this strange netty stuff and I just drape it over I, I want it to bunch up you can cut down here and do shreds let's see if it'll shred this time but when I tried this the other day it really didn't look that great um if you're doing but you could also do a piece of cotton and basically you would attach some cotton back here like a piece of cotton that would drape over the front and you would just tear them tear them all the way up to the top make them all crazy um that's just that's just another option but I did like to put like I like to put a hole in it like that um, this stuff is just fun to work with it's you can pull out strings if you want to have more tattered look so it doesn't um, like look I'm just pulling out a bunch of strings I don't know where the strings are going but we're pulling them out um, there we go actually we could probably use these strings to tie the stuff for the head because and then like over here there's kind of a hole started I'm not really cutting a hole I'm just kind of using my fingers to pull it open and it just it's just fun now I feel like this is just going to be way too long I don't want this to cover my um, amazing bottom down here so we're going to trim it up and I'm not going to be precise about it I'm going to I'm going to trim crooked and I'm not going to cut it perfectly and it's going to be all diagonal and um We'll save that we might use it on something else this would probably be a good piece just to drape across the brim of the hat so we'll save that but now so and then again I'm just gonna take the bottoms I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull off of these big strings because they annoy me but then just kind of there we go so I want to bunch it up across the shoulders but I want to stop it you know at the little where the hands are um, I don't want it to cover up any of this any of the things that we just worked on I don't want them covered because they're really cute and then this um I don't know just kind of make it different <laughs> there's really no right way or wrong way to do this just do it so then I take the stuff I draped over the shoulders back here and I'm just going to hot glue them right to the back of these shoulders just like that I'm going to use because this has holes in it so we're going to we'll have to use a silicone mat to uh, so we don't burn our fingers off 
And this is just going to hold it in place. Now, yeah, the back isn't very pretty, but, but if you wanted to drape it over evenly so that the back looked like the front, like if you wanted it to be two dimensional, you absolutely could. But I'm making this with the intention, <coughs> excuse me, with the intention of putting in a wreath where the back is not going to be seen. But yes, you could drape this all the way on the back and make it just like this front. So he's cute from front or back. That is totally up to you. But see how, I mean, I've got this, I like this long piece, but I feel like it's a little bit too long, but I, I like the way that it's um, just all over the place. See, and that's really all you have to do. So even if you're doing shredded fabric, that's all you want to do. You just want to make it uneven and old and tattered looking. This fabric here, this, um, I love this fabric, but as you can see, it's got very light gray on it. Now I like the light gray because it helps everything. You can see it with all these dark colors in the center, you can really see these fringes down here. But if you're going to shred the whole thing, you'd probably want to look for a fabric that was a solid black or something that didn't have a light colored background. It might be a little too much for it. It might make it really bright. I don't know if you want to go with bright. Okay, so my wood stick over here oops, is right to the end. And over here, it's sticking out just a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and give this one just a little trim. Um, like I said, I don't want anything poking out that can poke somebody or um, damage their property or, you know, if a child is running, well, obviously, if a child is running and runs into the wreath, I don't want this to, you know, stick out too far where it could poke them. You just have to think of all those things, guys. When you have a business and you're selling things like this, you have to kind of put all the worst case scenarios. You hope to goodness that parents, you know, watch their children, but children can be children, you know? and they're, they get into trouble and that's just what they do. All right, so that's basically the whole body. So we're, we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna work on the head. We're working on it all separately because it's easier that way. All right, so this is our little, strange little head. And guys, we're basically gonna do the exact same thing um, that we just did on everything else. So we're gonna put some polyfill in here. Oops, I can open it up. You know, make him a nice, you want something that the hat can sit on. You don't want this to be flat because then your hat will just fall over. So you got to, you got to put, you know, a couple of good handfuls of polyfill in there and stop right when you get to the fringes. Well, <laughs> I don't know if you can hear my dogs just decided to howl right outside the window, because <laughs> why not? <laughs> They're hilarious sometimes. Okay, so we have it like that. We're going to need another raffia. This one, I'm gonna do this one a little bit thicker. I want it to um, stick out all the way around the bottom of that head. So, <laughs> I don't know if you all have dogs that howl like that. Ours seem to do it all the time. <laughs> we don't really know why, they just, no reason. They just like to howl. Okay, so I got this one. It's a little bit thicker, but it's probably in the six to seven inch range like the other one we did. I mean, it's pretty long, but you could always trim it. So, you know. We're going to tie a knot up here just to contain it. And then we're going to trim off anything that's super long and just, and then trim all of these, anything that's still oval just needs to be cut, made to a straight line. I like, I just, I like to run my scissors through it and if, when it catches on something, I know I need to trim that. Oh Lord. I'm guessing Ollie just got back, so that's why they're going a little crazy. All right. So just like that, I don't want to pull too many more off because I'm losing a bunch as I go here. Leave that up there. Okay. So this is the one that's going to go in the neck, but of course we'll have to put it on the pole first. Um, I'm trying to remember how I did it yesterday. I think there was a way I did it that was easier, but now I want to make two of these for the hair. I don't want them to be super, super thick, not as thick as this one. Um, 
because it really it'll stick out really funny and it, you know you know like like this you know this is a good size it's it's not near as thick as that one good <laughs> I completely missed okay we'll leave that I just completely missed the bundle with that knot <laughs> it's way up here where's my scissors oh. That is not how that was supposed to work. Okay, get your bundle together again. This stuff multiplies, I swear. Okay, so now, hold it together better. a hair right there. You can always trim it a, a little more later. This one is much. This one seems much thicker than the other one again. I think the pieces themselves are thicker. We're gonna go with it. I'm gonna steal a piece here that I can tie it with. Now, if you wanted to put raffia all the way around the back of the hat, again, if you want the back of your scarecrow to look as cute as the front, then yeah, you probably want to make two more of these bundles to go on the back, or at least one more. Because really, the way I'm doing it, you're only going to see the raffia from the front. Um, so you just have to decide. It's really long. Have to decide, you know, what you want your back to look like. So those are the for the hair. All right. So I'm going to take a piece of that thread that we had, and I'm going to tie the bottom of the head because um, it is easier. For me to do this to see where to put the face pieces like the nose and the eyes if it's tied up of course you want them to be centered so you can always cut this little rope off I don't like this bundle in the front there. What does the back look like? That's not too bad. Now the back looks better. We're going to go with the back. <laughs> All right. So. I guess we'll wait. We'll wait and do that when we have our, we put our hat on. Well, here's the deal. It's so much easier. This is such a big project. It is hard to do all of this when it's when you have the stick and the body in front of you. This hat is huge. Holy moly. Okay. So um, I like to make the head, the whole head. I mean, have it ready to just stick on the pole um, like this. Oh, I forgot. We need another one to put. If we cut the top off of this or cut a part of this and have raffia coming out, I completely forgot. We need to do that too. So we'll need another little bundle of raffia. So I'm just kind of getting the head in here where it's sort of centered. And then I just start hot gluing it. The front. Don't do the sides. Just do the front and then the back. We don't want it sliding around on us while we're putting the raffia and all that in. So do the front and the back and then just hold them for a second. We will put this in when we put the head on the pole. But for right now... We're just worried about getting the hair and the eyes. Oh, I did it again. I don't know what is wrong with my glue guns. Or every time I've done this, both times I've made this, 
All the glue has seeped out like really far. And I don't understand. I don't know why it's way coming out this far. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Great thing about hot glue on felt. See what I'm doing? Once the, once the glue cools off, if you have a really sharp little pair of snips, you can literally cut that glue right off of the felt. And then you just use a lint roller or something and get the rest off of it. You can cut it right off. So I don't know what happened here. I don't know. I don't like it. I'm not happy with that right there. Okay. So now we want to take our little hair piece. I'm going to cut, cut a few of these long ones off. And I'm going to glue all the way around the whole thing, all the way to the knot. And then we're going to shove it right up in this corner here where we haven't hot glued yet. Sometimes you can use your scissors to kind of help push it up in there. Um, it's, it's got hot glue all around it, so it's going to stick to the hat and it's going to stick to the side of the face. I made an absolute god-awful mess with this hot glue. Um, on cotton, if you just let the hot glue cool off, you just you can pick it off with your fingernail. A little easier than the felt, but... Okay, so there we go. So see what I mean? If you wanted, to, if you wanted hair across the back, you would have to do, oh gosh, I'd probably do three more. You would need a lot to um, cover the back if that's what you wanted to do. And I like to cut off anything above the knot that's kind of sticking out everywhere. You want to get rid of that because it just makes it harder for you to push all this in there. So I put some glue on it. Kind of lift this little area and just kind of shove it in there and then you pull the hat down to make sure it's even it does not want to stay where i want it i have to fight with it a little bit you see i did not stuff the hat i didn't i don't want the hat to be stuffed and i'm just going to squeeze these ends i want I want all the hot glue that I had inside that raffia to grab onto something, whether it's the hat or the face or something. Okay, so like that. And let's see. Maybe I won't cut the end off. I'll just put, I'll just make a little slit and we'll put it in like that. That would be cute. Let's try that. Actually, let's let's make a patch. We got time. We got time. I don't know what my dogs are doing out there. But... I... I just hear a lot of banging around. So this again is a um, knit or a, yeah, I don't know. you can pull the threads. I don't know what you call that. I guess a knit type of fabric. And if you just use your fingernail, you can usually grab the threads and just pull them. Gives it more of a rough edge. <laughs> or if you want, use pinking shears and then um, pull it in there, makes it really easy to pull. And everything's uneven and it's really cool looking. Okay, so, so I want the hat just to be randomly, I thought we'll put, this, put it like that. And this was not planned, this is just impromptu. Let's just try something new like that right in the front and then I'm going to over here right underneath it I'm gonna cut a slit in here not very big half an inch or so I'm not gonna do a huge wad of this but this is gonna be much shorter it's probably only gonna be about three inches um, cause I gotta be able to wedge it up in there. I just want to show a little bit of raffia coming up out of the hat. It doesn't have to be a lot. Okay. And you know what? I'm not even going to bother to, uh, tie this one. I'm going to take this end like it is. And I'm just going to shove it in there. Um, just want to make sure I don't stick it. 
um, like all the way through to the back of the hat. Like you want that, you want the back of the, you don't want the back of the hat to stick to it. So I'm kind of leaving it toward the back of the hat. See, it's not touching all this yucky glue I just put in there. Um, and we're gonna let that, we're gonna let that cool off before we do anything. So basically it's just gluing to the front of the hat right now. We need to let that totally cool before we mess with it. We don't want your hat to be crimped, like with a with a with one piece of it that's glued the front and the back together. So that is why I only let it glue, um, grab hold of the front part. So we'll put on our eyes and nose since we're here. I like to start, um, well, well, we'll have to put them in here. These might actually be too big for this face. If that's the case, yeah. I'm going to cut these down just a bit. And the reason they're too big is I probably um, didn't put enough polyfill in it. So let's actually, let's try that first. I probably cinched it up too far and didn't give myself enough polyfill. Since we haven't glued this yet, all we have to do is cut off this rope. We can easily add more. Um, polyfill to it to give us to give us more face to work with. Does that make sense? So I will just kind of add a little more and basically what's when we tie it now it's going to be further further down giving us a little bit bigger face area. The hat was a little big too so um, I didn't really take the time to match up all the pieces before I started putting it together. Normally when the hat is too big, I would just sew the, um, the top part. I would sew the seam closed just a little bit more, make it a little bit tighter. But really, since we're gluing it on, I'm not, not too, too worried about it. Okay. So now we'll bunch up our, our little bottom here and you can kind of tell we have a much bigger face area. I'm going to grab a piece of this black yarn in my trash can that we pulled out of the netting because it works because I don't have any more jute here. So we're just going to tie this lightly and I just tie it. Um, we'll, we'll have to read. Well, let's see. We're going to do the, the pole next, so let's just go ahead and put the face on. I think I have it pretty good down here. When we go to tie it around the, the dowel, it will be fine. Yeah, see, I can fit all the pieces on now. No problem. And this is absolutely the most basic of basic scarecrow faces. Y'all can get as creative as you want. I mean, there's some really spooky, scary ones out there that I like, but, you know, making them out of felt, may that's not really an option. You just have to, you have to think about how on earth you can make it and what materials you can make all that stuff with. And I just decided we're going to do a basic pumpkin face. So basically our hat is kind of done other than tattering it up. Um, I kind of do want to put this on there just because I have it and it kind of, it's going to look cool. I mean, it's all tattered and torn up anyway. So um, we don't really have much to do with it. I mean, other than just glue it on, it's going to look neat. So um, I guess I just go ahead and glue this on now since we're here. Just ran. I don't want the whole thing to stick. I just want little pieces of it because I want it to hang off and be um, messy. So we're just going to throw a little bit of glue, little squiggles, kind of open it up and I just use my finger to pat it down. There we go. And see, there's some hanging off right here and I'm okay with that. It's fine. It just looks, uh, let me finish this little edge right here. I don't know. I kind of like it. I can even make it more tattered. 
I wanted to, but we'll just leave it like that and let it cool. All right. So now we want to put our head onto our body. Let me get rid of this raffia. Grab our head. Now we may have to um, cut the pole down. I didn't make it so the pole would go into the hat. We didn't leave a hole at the top of the head. Don't really feel like you need it to go that far, but you definitely need the pole to go to the top of the head. So, so I always forget I'm right-handed. I need to go this way. So basically it's hitting right there and I just feel like it's just a little bit too long. Um, I'm gonna cut off about an inch of it. Just cut off a little bit at a time until you get it right. You want, there we go. See, you want these fringes to sit. When you tie this, you want the fringes to lay on that. So actually I'm gonna cut off just a tiny bit more. Maybe about a half an inch. There we go. And if you wanted to, you can put a hole in the top of the head and, and have the hat or the pole go all the way through into the hat. But, uh, this works too. So you want these fringes when you, when you cinch up this neck, I know that's a crazy thing to say, but when you cinch it up, you want these little fringes to kind of spill out onto, um, the body, you know, the neck area, and you want the raffia that we're going to put in there to kind of spill out onto it. So I'm just making sure all the fringes are coming out like that. I'm going to take the raffia, which you don't, I mean, you can do two raffias if you feel like it. I just did one and just had it coming out the front like that because I thought it was too much to have one coming out each side. So um, I am going to just put the blue directly on the pole since I have it right where I want it right here. Get that raffia stuck on there before we tie it. I don't want the raffia moving around. So, let's see. I don't know if I have a piece, another piece of that. Y'all, no, don't ever look in your craft trash can. You'll be wondering where the heck did you get this stuff? That is too small. Look in my bin. What did I bring? Oh, here's a piece of brown. So we'll just use a piece of brown on the neck. It'll be fine. Doesn't have to be black. Okay. So that raffia is in place. Now you're, you want to keep pushing that pole up there um, and pulling these down. Make sure everything is, nothing is tucked up under. Take a piece. Go ahead and get your raffia or your jute, excuse me, and put it up under. And you're going to have to just cinch this thing on there. Um, and you can always go back and tug these little pieces out afterwards. You probably have to, honestly. But uh, you want to pull it on there. It just takes taking some time, a little tug it, like pull it, and then kind of pull out some of the pieces that are stuck under it. Maybe um, like I can tell right now this rope on the back side is, is completely, yeah, it's missing completely. Hold on. So I want to lay the rope down. I want to lay the back side so all those little fringes don't get um, caught up and missed by this jute. So now we'll just kind of grab it and we're going to tug on all these little fringes. Get them out of there. This is why you want the um, raffia to be glued down just a bit because when you start tugging on all of this, they tend to pop out. Oh, there's one. There it goes. Okay. So now we're going to just cinch it on the neck as tight as we can get it. Tie another knot in it. I'm going to trim those off part way. Okay. So now I will really go back and I want to tug on each one of these little fringes kind of individually to make sure that they're snug and firm inside of that knot that we just made. We don't want any of them not included. 
And it did, it did scrunch up my face a little bit like that, but it's okay. I'm gonna flip it over and do the same thing. I'm gonna just, just tug on them. Like that. Put it back over. I feel like there's a hole right, I feel like I'm missing a fringe right here, but I think they just got moved around when I pulled it so tight. There we go, that looks better already. There was one under here that was all bunched up and that's what was keeping it. So I'm gonna trim up some of this because I don't like it being this long on the chest and literally, ow, just, uh, <laughs> just cutting randomly. I'm not worrying about it. I don't want them to be even. And then I'll shake him over trash can over here. I just didn't like the, the, the raffia being that long onto the chest. I want some of it coming out of there, but I don't need it to be that long. It's still long. All right. I don't want to cover up all this other stuff that we did. You know, the raffia doesn't need to be the main focal point. All righty. So now, now that we have it tied down and everything looks good. We want to go back and just put in globs of glue, like lift up the little fringy things and just throw a glob of glue under there. Um, this is all going to get stuck up under this knot area. So it's not going to seep out onto your pumpkin at all. Um, but you just, you want everything kind of glued in. It's the only way to attach the hat or the head, sorry, to the pole. Um, yeah, that's good. I've already glued the heck out of that one. Let's see over here. I'm just lifting it up and putting my nozzle of my glue gun in there all the way to the pole and putting in a glob of glue. And now kind of grab around your knot, kind of squeeze it, kind of get all of that um, glue from your, the head into the knot area. And there we go. Guys, he's ready. He's done. I think it's cute. I think uh, there's so much variation you can do with this and you can make him really, uh, now this is cooled off. So you can kind of scrunch up the hat and make it look, you know, don't want it perfect. Um, I just kind of do little snippets like this. Um, around the front of the hat and maybe take out a chunk like you know a bird might have and there's really no way to fray um, felt so just kind of have to get creative with it be you want to look a little tattered and a little worn that's fine I like that anyway you know you want everything to kind of be frayed looking but isn't it cute so now if you were to put this in a wreath and all you would have to do is put uh, something around the arms or like right here up around underneath where the raffia is to attach it. And you could even, if you wanted to, you could cut a hole through this fabric back here, attach a pipe cleaner through this pole, and then just put some hot glue on either side of that to hold everything in place. And that would be super easy to do. Wait, let me see if I can do one. I don't have a black pipe cleaner though. I don't want to use a white one. But basically, for your wreath people, you would just put a hole in there and put this underneath that. And um, then you would have a pipe cleaner coming off the back looking like this. And, you know, then just use, you can put one up around the neck, you can put one anywhere you want to, to attach it to a wreath. But yeah, he's super cute. I like the orange so much better. I didn't dislike the white, but I think the orange just, I, I needed, needed a color. He was a little, he was a little stark, but I would love the burlap too, guys. Don't, um, if you are good with burlap, you know, do the burlap. And you can tell this little guy is just a bit smaller than this one because when I redid the pattern, I did cut him down a bit because he was huge. Now, if you want to do it bigger, you saw the pieces that we used. I mean, you can make those pieces bigger. It was basically a shirt, uh, oval thing for the head. And then this hat was a little large for this guy. So you could probably use the same pa hat pattern. Just make the shirt a little bigger, a little longer, and then make the head a little bigger. And 
you can use the exact same pattern just cut it cut it a half inch bigger all the way around and then it'll, it'll be back to this size if you want this bigger one so that is it i hope you enjoy him and i cannot wait to see what you guys do with him um <laughs> he's he's definitely been fun for me to design he's way out of my uh, wheelhouse comfort zone whatever you want to call it so you know i had i did enjoy making it though so i hope you do and i hope you will show me all of your amazing scarecrow pumpkins all right guys you have a great day